Hi, I'm Gabe Turan, a resident of the city of Oxnard and the city council member for district two. And I'm gonna be going over with you the items you can expect to see on the upcoming city council agenda for Tuesday, April the 6th, 2021. And uh, just know that the purpose of this presentation is just to let people know what to expect and they can um, find out at the end how they can speak on any of the items that I talk about. Uh, but I will not be uh, disclosing, you know, my personal thoughts on the items or um, how I plan to vote on them. So I just wanted to make that clear up top. All right, so the first item we have here are some ceremonial items. And uh, these are proclamations that we'll see at the top of the meeting. And these two proclamations are gonna be for designating April as Sexual Assault and Child Abuse Awareness Month. And then the second proclamation will be designating April 2021 as Fair Housing Month. We'll move into the info consent agenda. And you can see this one is around an agreement for services for a, a bicycle and pedestrian facilities installation for Edding Road. And then for um, Oxnard Boulevard, uh, closing of the bikeway gap um, that's there now. And um, it'll be what's called a class one bicycle lane or bicycle path, which means it's completely removed from traffic. It's not like a bike path like you'd see right here. But re in actuality, this will become a bike path. And you can see these are the uh, train tracks. And then this is Oxnard Boulevard here. So the path will be removed from um, oncoming or passing traffic. And that's a class one lane. Know also that um, on Edding Road, you can see here that there will be some uh, extension of sidewalk where it currently does not exist, but also the addition of bike lanes there as well. Uh, an interesting conversation that came up when this went before council committee was working with the neighborhood to ensure that uh, the addition of the bike lanes will not negatively impact parking within the neighborhood. And staff did say that they would be working on that as well with the neighborhood residents. And the next item on the info consent agenda is another agreement for supplemental waste transfer hauling services. And the next item we have here is what's called a receive and file report where, uh, or receive and file item where uh, there's not really an action that happens at the end of this. This is more just an update for the council and the public on a specific item that is covered by the report. And you can see here, this one is around the Channel Islands Water Quality Assurance Project Plan Report. And for those of you who may recall when the, um, the power station uh, over in Mandalay was uh, decommissioned and shut down a few years ago, there was uh, seemingly an increase in like growth of organic matter in the waterways that were in the harbor. And uh, so this particular report is giving an update to that. Uh, they've tested the water, they'll continue to test the water. And this is just giving folks uh, the ability to see what's been going on and what the plans are moving forward. And then the next one is also a receive and file. This is for community, community facilities districts or CFDs. And it's just an update or on their reserves or the studies of their reserves. And the specific item, areas that are mentioned in the report are Restport, Seabridge, and River Park. And everything I've talked about so far in the info consent agenda, you can go to the packet on the city's website, which I'll have the um, address at the end of this. And you can see the, all the details of full reports for public viewing from there as well. So where those last two were receiving files, this one is another agreement and it also falls, falls under the Public Works Department. And it's regarding the um, third floor of the Civic Annex building. And this happens to be for the Finance Department. And you'll see it says rebid there. Apparently, this has been out to bid a couple of times already. Um, and what ended up happening was that uh, the um, bids came in over budget. And so they kind of kept deferring it and figure out what they were gonna do and streamlining the plans. And you can see in the picture here, this is one of many pictures they included in the report. They cited that the space is not efficiently utilized and it's configured in a way that is a remnant of the way it was used in the past. And they just haven't been able to do the construction that's needed to um, make the workspace usable by the finance department. In fact, the finance department's housed in two different places right now. 
this floor and another floor. And ultimately when this work is done, if it's approved by council, they will be able to now be housed in the same floor. So um, there are a lot of interesting pictures. I encourage you to go take a look at those and see what you think about it. So after the info consent portion of the agenda, we have public hearings and there's one public hearing for the evening and it's from the housing department. And it's a five-year public housing agency plan, the annual agency plan, capital fund program, and the five-year action plan for low rent public housing. All rolled up into one. You can uh, go and see the full report on the staff report, but this also came to council committee as well as an update or as an update to the council committee. And then the last item on the agenda is a report. And this report is specifically about the Renew Oxnard Community Outreach Program. And this has, has to do with the Landscape Maintenance Districts or LMDs. You may recall the name LMDs or the acronym, and there's been a lot of talk about them for years now. And even years up before that, there was quite some controversy around them. And to some degree, there still is today. Uh, but you will be able to get an update if you view the video that accompanies this particular item. But know that um, this is just to receive an update on it and hear from the public about the um, collaborative effort that the, um, the consultant Civic Mike and the city of Oxnard are doing to include residents in this, uh, in this effort moving forward. And in short, uh, you'll be able to see if you look into the staff report or look at the past video about this, that the, um, the idea is for the city and the consultant to work collaboratively with residents who live in LMDs to decide what do they wanna do? Do they wanna keep their LMD um, uh, levies or their fees that they pay every year at the same amount? Do they wanna increase them? Do they want to uh, create what's the CFDs as I had mentioned earlier from the um, other item? There's a, a number of different things that the residents can do, but the thing is that According to the report, as you'll see, uh, the, it's up to the residents to decide what the course of action is. And I believe they're looking to get residents as involved as possible, as many residents as involved as possible to make that decision. So you'll be able to see that that evening. And this is also just a report for the council and the public to see. All right, so to close things out here, um, this website address here is really important. It's oxnard.org slash city hyphen meetings. Very important that you put the hyphen in there. When you go to that uh, URL, you will be able to find out where you can sign up. It's at the top of the page, sign up for such and such date. In this case, it'd be April 6th. You can click on that, you fill out a form and um, identify which item you'd like to speak on and then click submit and then you're good to go. You will receive an email that gives you the information about how to join the meeting to give your public comment on any items that you signed up for for that evening. Uh, the other thing that you'll see there is you, if you scroll down on that page, you'll see all of the upcoming agendas and past agendas and agenda packets. So when I kept referring to the staff report or the agenda packet, if you look at the date 4-6-2021 and find the city council meeting, you can click on packet and you'll get all of the 400 plus pages of um, staff reports and attachments for any of the items. And if you wanna comment on an item, what I've always found very useful is to look at the staff report, look at all those attachments, read through them and really formulate uh, your, your comment that you're going to give because that will help you or to help you form questions that you'd like to ask of staff as well as a member of the public. All right, so I thank you all very much for taking a few minutes to watch this and um, Hope you're all doing well, stay, stay healthy, stay well. Hope we are all doing great. See you all soon, take care.